I just wanted to mention, I forgot to say what kind of sketchbook I'm using. So this is the Stillman and Byrne Alpha series. It's a fairly lightweight paper, about 150 GSM. So it does, you can sort of see here that it gets quite sort of crinkly. It's, it's not designed for a huge amount of water to be used on it but I throw everything at it. I don't mind it getting crinkly in a sketchbook. And I really like having lightweight paper and a lot of pages because it helps in not feeling so precious about the sketchbook. So I've been enjoying this and I've been using everything in it without a problem. And it's held together. It's a nice, strong, well-made sketchbook. So the next prompt is negative space. We'll be working in layers and focusing on bringing out shapes by painting the negative space around the shape. So I'm going to start with a really wishy-washy, free-flowing watercolor, maybe a touch of gouache, ink, something very loose to start with, knowing that quite a bit of that will get covered up. So this is a background layer. So let's get started with that. Okay, so I've got my watercolor set here. So since we went with the uh, cool colors there, I'm gonna go with some warmer colors. Um, and I'm just sort of grabbing paint off of the uh, palette and I can just mix it here. So I'm just gonna start with dancing colors around on the page using warm colors. So I've been able to use quite a lot of water in this sketchbook and it's been working absolutely fine. So I can just use it straight out of the bottle. So I start a lot of paintings like this, just making a, a fun, colorful background, letting it dry and then coming over the top. So so I also have some water-based and water-soluble markers here. I have the Tombow dual brush pens and I have these Letraset Aqua markers. And you can use these. I would keep them away from the areas with wet paint, but you can come in and just add some color using these as well. I'll just keep going with a bit of the watercolour. So I'm not going to use gouache on this particular page. I might save the gouache for another spread. So I'm going to stick with the uh, watercolour and the ink, the high flow acrylic for the background and the markers. I think that's enough for this particular one. So where the markers are, you can add water, see it, and it blends out a bit like watercolour. Okay, just picking up a bit of this sepia ink, just doing some splashing. I want to try and get maybe not all of the page covered, but a good bit because this is the background. I might just leave the edges just for ease of working in a sketchbook, um, but I do want most of the paint to be page to be covered with a nice background. So you can see how free and easy something like that is. Okay, so let's let it dry. So this is the background. The, um, the prompt is negative space. So we will be using this to be the positive space and then painting around the negative space with a darker color. So I'm gonna dry it off with the hairdryer first. So that's good enough to get started. And now I'm gonna choose the shapes that I want to add to this page. And I'm going to be using some of my jelly print pages as inspiration for some botanical shapes. So I'm going to draw the shapes in with a graphite pencil. So I'm not overly focusing on getting this exactly right. I'm just using it as loose inspiration, but what I really want is loose shapes. So I'm going to just 
keep on drawing. So I'm going to do another one that sort of comes over the page. And you can experiment with how you hold your pencil for something like this. So I'm just sort of holding it really loosely to try and get sort of some funky botanicals. Okay, so you can fiddle around with your shapes a bit if you want to, um, just to get them how you want. But keep in mind, it is just a sketchbook page, so it doesn't have to be overly um, precise. Once you go over, these lines will show up, these lead pencil lines. So you just want to make sure that you're happy with where they are. Right, so I'm going to use something that will cover up the background, but not completely. So rather than going really opaque with a heavy bodied, thick opaque paint that would obliterate everything in the background, I'm going to use this shading gray. So this is a semi-transparent gray color. It's really good for glazing and allowing what's there still to show through, but to block it out. So I'm gonna pop a bit of this on my palette. And I'm going to use a flat brush in a couple of different sizes. Yeah. So I find these brushes are really nice for getting up close to an edge when you are painting around the negative space. Now, I don't, I'm not even sure if I'm going to fully complete this page in this example because it might take a little bit of time, but we'll see how we go. Um, you'll get the general idea of it anyway. So what I'll be doing is taking my shapes and just painting around them using a semi-transparent colour. So you don't have to do botanical shapes. Of course, you could do um, shapes a bit similar to what I did in the last page. Um, geometric shapes, round shapes, anything really. And so once I've painted around the edge, I'm going to continue on with some mark making as well. So if you need to go a little bit darker in some areas, just to get a bit more contrast between the leaves and the negative space, I mean, you can always go in with something. I'm using up a little bit of this heavy bodied bone black. So bone black's quite good because it's not as black as carbon black. Um, it's still got a bit of transparency in it, but you can get a little bit more depth of color. So you can see me doing that there, just sort of pushing the contrast a little bit more in some areas. So we can see those lovely leaf shapes. So I'm going to now quickly dry this off and then come back over the top with some marks, just some details So. Use the dark areas to add light marks if you want. And then the lighter areas, you might want to add dark marks just to add some contrast in. So I'm using the Posca paint pen, which really works well once you add a bit of ink and acrylic into the mix. Um, it really works well over the top of the acrylic ink. So just in this light area here, I've got a Derwent Inktense pencil, charcoal gray. Let's go with that one. So you might want to put some other darker marks in as well. Totally up to you. Now these are all water soluble as well. So you can come over the top, with some water. And you can just keep going as far as you want to with it.
So you would have seen me filling in the negative space using a combination of high flow acrylic and heavier bodied paint. Both of them had a little bit of transparency, which is really nice because you can still see the background. And then I just added in some details using Posca paint pen and the Derwent Inktense pencil. So that's the end of that one. Let's move on to the next prompt.